Welcome back everyone to 10.2 Calculus with Parametric Curves. In this video we're going to tackle an application of integration for these parametric curves, mainly arc length. So let's get to it with a theorem of how do we calculate out arc length. So we have a nice curve C described by of course some parametric equations x equals f of t, y equals g of t. And we have some bounds, right? t is going to be restricted between alpha and beta f prime and g prime need to be continuous on alpha beta, then c is transversed exactly once as t increases from alpha to beta, then the length of the curve is given by L equals an integral from alpha to beta, and of course this is given by this interval up here, and we have the square root of dx dt, the derivative of x with respect to t, quantity squared, plus dy dt, quantity squared, again all under the square root dt. Now I'm not going to go over the proof of why this is the formula, why this is the correct thing to use, but it's in our book. I invite you to take a look at it. Uh, also, you can sure you can find some online resources that go over why this is the formula. But for now, we just want to apply this thing, right? So I have an example here. Find the length of the circle of radius 3 defined by x equals 3 cosine t, y equals 3 sine t on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. And the claim is we should know how to do this. Length of the circle, that's the same thing as the circumference. Circumference is just pi times 2 times the radius. So in this case, the answer should be 6 pi, right? That's the circumference, aka the length of the circle. Let's go ahead and make sure that our formula actually gives this answer of 6 pi. So the first thing, we see that we're going to need the derivative of x with respect to t squared and the derivative of y with respect to t squared. So let's calculate these things out. I can take the derivative of our x function with respect to t and our y function with respect to t. Now we're going to go ahead and plug this into our equation, the integral from 0 to 2 pi, given by this interval here, of the square root of, now dx dt squared, that's going to be 9 sine squared t plus dy dt, that's going to be 3 cosine t squared. That's going to give us the 9 cosine squared t. All under the square root, dt. And we should notice, well, this is the same thing as 9 times sine squared t plus cosine squared t. Well, sine squared t plus cosine squared t is the same thing as 1. How nice. So really, this is just the integral from 0 to 2 pi of the square root of 9 dt. The square root of 9 is just 3. I can integrate this, I get 3t, evaluate from 0 to 2 pi. Well, when I plug in 2 pi, I get 6 pi altogether. So there is our final answer, and this, of course, matches our circumference formula. Now, not all of our uh, problems are going to be so easy as finding the length of a circle, right? That one we can do on our own. Uh, here's a more complicated one, right, where we don't have a circumference formula for this curve. Uh, so let's go ahead and use the formula here. So again, I'm going to calculate out dx dt and dy dt because I know I'm going to need these things here in just a second. So I get 6t and 6t squared. And then I'm going to plug these into my arc length formula. So the integral from 0 to 1, again, given by this interval for t, the square root, and now I need to square dx dt. So I get 36t squared plus dy dt squared. So that's going to be 36t to the fourth, all under the square root times dt. So now we can notice, right, I can factor out a 36 and a t squared from all of these values. So a 36 and a t squared. And what will be left? Well, there's going to be a 1 and a t squared left over. So, of course, you could distribute this and you get back right to where you started with. Now there's a nifty property about square roots, right? It says that you can distribute square roots over multiplication. So this is going to be the same thing as the square root of 36 times the square root of t squared times the square root of 1 plus t squared. So the square root of 36 is just 6. The square root of t squared is, well, this is the absolute value of t, right? But because t ranges from 0 to 1, it's already positive. So the absolute value of t is just the same thing as t. And then finally, the square root of 1 plus t squared, well, I can't simplify this down anymore. But luckily, now we can integrate this with some u substitution. u should be equal to 1 plus t squared. Oops, I wrote 2t, getting ahead of myself. du is equal to 2t dt, right? That's the derivative. And of course, we can solve this. t dt is equal to du over 2. 
So we can see I have a TDT to trade in. So this is going to give me 6 times the square root of u, right? u is this thing under the square root, times du over 2. Now I can integrate this. I'm going to get a 3. That's my 6 and my 1 half, canceling a little bit. And I'm going to get 2 thirds u to the 3 halves. Okay, now let's go ahead and put back in our x's, or sorry, not x's, t's. 1 plus t squared, everywhere I see a u. Simplify a little bit. And remember, I'm evaluating from 0 to 1. So if I was to plug in 1 to this equation, right, I'd have 2 times, and let's see, 1 squared would be 1, plus another one would be 2. That's going to be 2 raised to the 3 halves. And if I plug in 0, I'm going to get 1 raised to the 3 halves. Well, 1 raised to the 3 halves is just 1. So here is our final answer, the length of this curve. All right, one more length of a curve to finish out the section. x equals e to the t plus e to the negative t. y equals 1 minus 2t. t ranges from 0 to 2. Using the arc length formula here, integral from 0 to 2 of the square root of, okay, I need some derivatives dx dt is going to be e to the t minus e to the negative t. dy dt is going to be negative 2. Let's go ahead and plug these in. Remember, I need to square them. So I get e to the t minus e to the negative t quantity squared plus 4, right? Because 4 is just negative 2 squared. Now let's expand this all out a little bit. So I'm going to get e to the t squared minus 2 e to the t e to the negative t and then plus e to the negative t quantity squared. And I want to simplify this down a little bit, right? So for instance, this e to the t e to the negative t, right, when I added those, that'd be e to the 0, aka 1. So those just go away. And then I could distribute, not really distribute, but multiply this 2 by my t and by my negative t, right, using a property of exponents. So this is just e to the 2t and e to the negative 2t. So now I've simplified the way this looks quite a lot. And again, I can't forget about my plus 4. So now this negative 2 and this positive 4 are friends, right? And this just becomes positive 2. And now looking at this thing, my goodness, uh, this would be a real pain to integrate, right? But back from our good old other arc length problems in 8.1, we should recognize, well, sometimes these things are perfect squares, right? Because if it was a nice perfect square, then the square root would cancel and life would be a lot easier. So I'm hoping that this actually is a perfect square. And so the claim is that it is a perfect square. So looking back where this came from, looking back up here, right, we actually saw this e to the 2t minus 2 plus e to the negative 2t. So that was when I had a minus sign. But now I have a plus 2 instead of a minus 2. So the claim is, hopefully, this is e to the t plus Oops, there we go. I'm going to go back a little more. e to the t plus e to the negative t. And if you FOIL this all out, lo and behold, it is. So this is a perfect square, which makes life a lot easier. All right, if I expand this out, e to the 2t plus 2e to the t times e to the negative t plus e to the negative 2t. These things will cancel out. And again, we've now gone backwards. So yes, these are actually the same thing, which is quite remarkable. So now this I can certainly integrate, right? So these things cancel, the squared and the square root. These are already positive values, so you don't worry, need to worry about any absolute value or anything like this. Integrate, evaluate from 0 to 2. So when I plug in 2, I'll get e squared minus e to the negative 2. And when I plug in 0, I'm going to get 1 minus 1. So therefore, our answer will just be e squared minus e to the negative 2. Technically, there's a minus 0 here, but of course, we know that doesn't affect our answer. All right, and that is our last example for 10.2 arc length. Um, and that's it for parametric equations. So go ahead and do your homework. And when you come back next time, we'll be talking about polar coordinates. I'll see you shortly.